I don't have a presentation, but um, I think we've heard today that there are a lot of reasons why we don't have enough programmers. Um, and the Raspberry Pi Foundation is trying to solve exactly one of those problems. And that problem is that computers are too expensive to give to children. Um, we've had a vision, we've been running for several years now. Um, we are kind of a Cambridge University spin-off. We have a lot of Cambridge University people uh, involved. And certainly the realization that we needed to do something came from our work at the university, our work in admissions at the university. Uh, we realized maybe five or six years ago that we were experiencing a long-term decline in both the, um, the numbers and the capabilities of the 18-year-olds, the 17 and 18-year-olds who were coming in the door for interview. Um, I think reflected by the, very much our experiences reflected the graph that Simon showed at the start of the day. Um, so we went and looked at why this was happening. And one thing we identified, it's a, it, seems like, it seems like a very complicated story to us, but one of the things that was going on was Simply, um, we got very used, we'd grown fat and happy. We'd grown used to having an environment in which we could rely on getting 500, 517 year olds in the door every year who had owned a computer since they were five and had it on their desk. And it was a self selecting group of people applying. We could find 500 people in any given year who had at least gone, done something other than put a tape in the tape drive and try and play a game. People who had at least written a two line computer program. Um, so we got, we got fat and happy, and um, when that went away, when um, the, computer, the computers for children market was eaten from both directions by games consoles, uh, and by the family computer, the family PC, which sits on a desk, belongs to the family, and thou shalt surf the web on it, or thou shalt edit, do your homework on it, but thou shalt not under any circumstances break it, because if you break it, you can't fix it. Um, <laughs> When the Spectrum and the BBC Micro and the Commodore 64 and the TRS-80 got eaten from both directions, what we were left with was, uh, even, in the, even in the middle classes where people can afford to have a computer in their home, uh, a situation where people have no platform that they could program on. Um, so we set out to try and solve this, and we sell ourselves $25 as our target price, because that's kind of, it's a, it's a quarter of a round number, um, and it's the price of a textbook. Uh, and we had a feeling that computers ought to be priced like textbooks. You ought to be able to give one to every kid. Uh, and we tried a lot of different ways of building these. Uh, we tried using um, we tried using the AVR chips that are in Arduinos. We were able to get something working with that, but we weren't able to get something that we really felt had a modern enough feature set that it was going to have general applicability, that it was going to be useful outside of kind of geeking, geeky hacking kind of, um, kind of environment. Um, fortunately, we've ended up, I work for a company called Broadcom. Uh, we're a big giant semiconductor company. Um, and it happens that we build a chip which is very suitable for this kind of application. Uh, it was developed in Cambridge. Uh, it's got an arm in it. So it's a genuine product to the British computing industry. Um, and we realized maybe a year ago that we were actually in a position now to offer something really credible in the $25 price point. So what I've got on the table there is a prototype, an alpha prototype of the board. Um, the, the thing at $25, and I will just waggle the screen around so people at the, just spin the screen around so people can see that we are running. Well, okay, everyone is, everyone is <laughs> damn it. Um, uh, we have a, it's running, that's LXE, that's Debian, LXE, uh, with the GIMP and Ice Weasel. Um, so, um, for $25, we can give you a 700 megahertz arm, we can give you more graphical performance than an Xbox One, we can give you the ability to play 1080p Blu-ray, so we can give you a thing which is actually an exciting product for real life adults, it isn't an educational toy, it's a thing you could use to replace your Apple TV. Uh, or replacing a week. Um, for $35, we can add to that another 128 meg of RAM, and we can add a network connection. And based on the feedback we've had online, we suspect that most of our business is going to be in that $35. And it's going to be at that $35 point, not the $25 point. Even at $35, you can equip a classroom <coughs> of these for less than $1,000. Um, we were doing the back of an envelope calculation earlier uh, with gift aid in the UK. You can find some a philanthropist who's prepared to shell out 500 pounds. 
you can probably just about equip a class once you've got the gift aid on top you can probably equip a class with them for 500 pounds for one donation from one individual um, obviously there's an issue of display you have to have display output devices um, we can plug into dvi monitors hdmi tvs old analog tvs and the old analog tv is kind of the thing we're going for right this is the you know we want the 1980s idea of a computer being a of our box being a machine that turns your television into a computer. So if you own a television, you own a computer. Nice fuzzy graphics. Oh yeah, absolutely, interlace mode. <laughs> yeah, you can have 500 pixels, 500 vertical pixels as long as you don't care about the fact they flash on and off at 25 times a second. Um, it's all right. Don't hardly get headaches anymore. Um, so, um, so that's the problem with not having PowerPoint, right? Because you give a big unstructured list of stuff you've done. Um, we're trying to get these out by the end of the year. Um, I guess one thing that's really become clear to me today, and this was becoming clear to us, but it's really nice, nice to have it underlined, is over the last few months we've, we've become much less ambitious. We started off thinking, oh, we're going to build this device and we'll build a curriculum around it and it'll all be, you know, it'll all be integrated, vertically integrated and, and, and really nice. Um, I think we've been becoming less ambitious about this and I think today has helped me become even less ambitious. Um, <laughs> which is great. You inspire me. Um, yeah, the, we don't have to do that. The, uh, we can just be a component supplier. Um, like I say, there are, ten, there are probably 10 reasons why not enough children are learning to program, and price is one of them, and we can solve that particular problem, and I've got a lot more confidence than I have this morning that that's the only problem that we personally need to solve. Um, please buy one in November. Where can I buy it from? Uh, you can buy it from our website in November. What's if you, Amazon or something? <laughs> if you, you work for a large American software company, right? Yes. <laughs> if you email me, you might be able to have one of those. If you can, if you can um, give me an undertaking that you will tell, and this, this goes to everyone in the room, if you are in a position, thank you very much. If you are, we have, oh, 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 there we are. Okay, um, we, um, if you are in a large organization that can help us get primarily engineering hands on this device. We will lend you a device on the understanding that if you ever find yourself putting it in a drawer, you give it back. That's the that's the only that's that's the deal. So what about journalists? Um, can, we, can, can we make can we make it a tiny little bit more can we make it a tiny little bit more stable? Um, we are happy to talk about it and we're happy to give supervised demos. Um, uh, we would just, we are nervous about um, perhaps say this side of October sending that, sending units out. Are you in beta phase now? You are in beta phase? Uh, we are in a, um, we're in kind of a developer beta phase, so um, we are, um, we have some out with the Linux distros, we have some out with, um, we have some out with one of the Linux distros to get, um, uh, this is just using vanilla. Vanilla Debian, um, we, are, we have people who are helping us do footprint optimized, memory footprint optimized versions because we'd like the 128. The 256 meg is already very usable. This is actually the 128 meg. We'd like the 128 meg to be more usable and in a default Linux distro, you just have applications that come up and allocate 10 meg of data because why wouldn't you? Um, and, and we are not <coughs> Linux experts and hardware experts and so we need a little bit of assistance in getting rid of some of those little friendly applications. That's why we're not running Ubuntu. I know we say, we say Ubuntu on our website. Ubuntu has, on top of what you get in Debian, has a lot more. <coughs> sort of Can you make uh, this small not thin to plug? Yes. Machine unplugged. So uh, I don't know how many people here have seen, how many people have seen the video uh, on Rory Catherine Jones's blog of uh, David Braben um, showing the small one. We have a, a device, we have a version which fits in a USB key stick. But the problem is that it, it doesn't have enough periphery to fit the connectors on. <coughs> right. If it fits in a plug, yeah. then it's lots of things get sold. Yes. yes. Yeah, it's a nice, those nice British, big British. It's one thing Britain does better than anyone else. <laughs> AC <laughs> plugs. <laughs> <laughs> that British standard plug is. is, is it's is, so big, you don't, need it, you don't need anything to attach to it. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> You probably have to put a little monitor on it. <laughs> <laughs> <And a keyboard>. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's connect wirelessly to it. Um, let, let, me, let me just check I said everything I want to say. Um, yeah. Um, have you got a third world distribution plan yet? Um, yeah, so, so I've had about, so after the, after, the Rory, after the thing on Rory's blog, we had about 5,000 emails, of which a lot of them were from 
um, people in the developing world, um, uh, people saying, oh yeah, I run a school district in, in a certain end of country here, can I have a thousand of them? Um, uh, or, or can I be your exclusive distributor in Ghana, you know, or something like mm-hmm. that. Uh, lot, lot of, we had a lot of sub, 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 <coughs> sub-Saharan in a lot of South America. Um, so, one of the interesting things about the cost model is um, there isn't really a volume discount. Right, the one-off mm-hmm. price and the thousand-off price are the same, mm-hmm. but the thing that makes a distribution network feasible is the um, economies of scale and shipping. So uh, we can, in theory, FedEx drop ship these to people all over the world. However, that's going to be ex- well. You've got a twenty-five dollar computer. Your fifty bucks of shipping to some random place a long way away becomes very significant. Um, so there's still, mm-hmm. I think, a, a good business model for the guy who buys a hundred of these in a box and then resells them locally. Um, so we were surprised to discover that a no, it's not going to happen in the UK. It's probably not going to happen in North America. But the distribution is going to be um, a, a tiered channel. Is going to be feasible um, elsewhere, places where we aren't. Basically, um, the best. Oh yeah, I thought I mentioned the, the the best. The best email I've had is from some people in the Sinclair QL. Anyone remember the Sinclair QL? Yeah. Um, yeah some people asking if it was possible to have it booted to a QL annually. Because their QLs are getting old, <laughs> uh, and they want to put them inside their Sinclair QL box uh, so they can pretend that they're still using the Sinclair QL oh, and not have to worry about the, the fact that the, the, all the aircrafts are losing their contents. And stuff. So that was, that was the best one that I could. When tra- drawing through emails this morning, that was the best one I could find. But I've had an enormous. We've been be overwhelmed by the amount of support that this has had. Um, yeah, we think it's going to change the world. So, yeah. so thank you. Yeah. Good. Good.